Good morning, everyone. As always, place a cross on first, no matter what's going on in your life. Hey, you know why I say that? Because something's always going on in my life. <laughs> and the thing is, over the years, God was like, don't matter what's going on, good or bad, stay the course, stay calling on me, stay praying to me. And that's what I try to encourage people to do. You see, I'm going to tell you what I told you last week. I'm not a perfect person spreading the gospel. I'm an imperfect person spreading the gospel. I don't want you to model yourself after me. I don't want you to consider me something better than what I am. I'm nothing but a messenger. You understand? Who's trying to get you to develop a personal relationship with God. That's my goal. You understand? Because the only way you'll know what it is to live as a Christian is to live as a Christian. It's very simple. And nobody can tell you how to do it. We can read this Bible and think we know it all. But until you experience some things and go through some things, then you'll understand a little better how God works in your life and the lives of others. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. <clears throat> thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today I'm gonna read from Ecclesiastes. This is one of my one of my favorite one-liners is in this, this chapter. Now I'm probably gonna to touch base on that, but we'll see what God wants me to talk about. Let's go with the flow, people. We can start thinking is there's so much knowledge in here <laughs> that it's it's like you get a different revelation every time. That's why the book of God is alive. <laughs> You'll be surprised how your life will start lining up. You keep calling on God. God will give you so many type of confirmations, it's ridiculous. You'll be talking about something, you'll read a verse, then two days later you'll watch a video, and they'll talk about the same thing. How do you know you're on course with God? Because things will start lining up. <laughs> That's all I can tell you, people. Stay at it. <clears throat> Ecclesiastes chapter 7, starting. A good name is better than precious ointment and a day of death than the day of one's birth. What does that mean? When you die, you got no more worries. Now think about that. And the thing is, I'm going to tell you how that's going to be good for Christians. The day of death for a non-Christian is going to be horrible when they're awake. The day of death for a Christian is going to be beautiful. So think that, take that in consideration. You know what I'm saying? But either way, it's still a good thing. You cease from your works. You got to worry about nothing else. Done none of the side. You know why we're here? We we fear death. We do. This is human being. It's not a human being alive that claims they don't fear death at all. Because a lot of times we always feel like we got something left to do. Well, with God, you better hope and pray that you finish the work that He gave you to do under the sun. And finish it with Christ in your life. That's all I can tell you. Check this out. <clears throat> it is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. For that is the end of all men, and the living will lay it to his heart. You can try to do the math. What's drawing you out? What's drawing you to people? And the thing is, I can say that to myself. Just like Somebody's like, I'm having a party over here. Mm. And you're drawn to it. You're drawn to it. Guilty as charged. Plenty of occasions. But somebody's lose, a, lose someone. Draw to them. Draw to those who are really need assistance. But the Holy Spirit will help you with that. That's all you got to. The Holy Spirit will help you with that. <laughs> Sorrow is better than laughter. Check that out. For by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. Think about it. Mm. The Bible is perfect. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of myrrh. Look up the definition of myrrh. Let's look it up right quick, people. I try to keep a definition of, of, of uh, dictionary behind me because I don't know all these words. You know, I, I got a good idea what myrrh means, but in reality, I don't. <laughs> That's because I wouldn't be looking it up. House of joyfulness or gaiety with laughter. That's what a house of joyfulness. 
Wow, that's crazy. Think about the average person that goes to church or that calls on God. I say, say church Sunday. Or you ever hear a person be like, man, I'm going through some things. I need to go to church. I need to go here. I need to go there. I've been there. I'm going through some things. When I gave my life to God, I was going through some things. I need to go to church. Because I tried everything else. I tried to go out there to the person house that was drinking, smoking, doing everything that I thought could make me feel better. I did that for years. <laughs> Running to people to try to make me feel better. Running to the party spot to make me feel better. But guess what? You'll go home still sorrowful. Why go? <laughs> Sometimes the house of sorrow is your own house. Sorrow, take that pain that you're going through. Let it fester. Let it go through your body. Mm. It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools. Listen to the music this day. And I'm just going to talk about music right now. It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise. Think about it if you listen to the right songs that's telling you the truth. And then you listen to this music that's about this foolish music. Go out there and sleep around. Go out there and get drunk. Go out there and sleep with somebody's wife. That stuff, that's a song of fools. Whether you want to believe it or not. I grew up in blues, people. And as I got older, I was like, blues is the most depressing music you can listen to. My love went to the grind with somebody else. And everybody in the in the club listened to stuff about cheating. <laughs> Adultery and stuff like that. You expect something good to come from that. You out of your mind. And this goes for even if you're in your house. You think listening to this song for music <laughs> about what you're going through is going to make you feel better. No, it's going to make you feel worse, people. Mm -hmm. But one thing that one kind of music that will make you feel better is the gospel, true gospel music. Something that's going to lift you up, something that may rebuke you. Mm -hmm. For it's the crackling of thorns under pot, so it's the laughter of the fool. This also is vanity. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad, and a gift to straw of the heart. Better is, I love this, better is the end of the thing than the beginning. There, and the patient of spirit is better than the proud in the spirit. Be not hasty in the spirit to be angry, for anger resteth in the bosom of fools. What, what do you say? Be not hasty in the spirit to be angry. The Bible does not lie. Be not soon angry. Be, the Bible says God is slow to anger. It never says you not to be angry. Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry. And the Bible says to hate a brother without a cause. Sometimes things, people are going to do things that's going to make you angry. It is what it is. Which is how you react. The Bible is a book full of self-control. And you learn that as you go. Now watch this. Now this is the only way you're going to understand Verse 8, if you read verse 10, let's read verse 8 again. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning. There, and the patient of spirit is better than the proud in the spirit. Chapter 10, say not thou what is the cause that the former days were better than these, for thou dost not inquire wisely concerning this. Think about it. People are like, I wish I was back 25 again when I was living the life of my life. I, can, I wish things were like, I remember when I first met my wife, things were so good then. Cause you don't know the future. You don't know how good things going to be in the future. If you faint not, if you stay patient, if you're looking at what's going on in your life right now, you are looking unwisely because <laughs> you have a faith in the father. That's the author and finisher of your salvation. Jeremiah 39, 29, 11 tells you that God said he has a plan for you. And his plan is to what? Give you an expected end. You understand? I ain't finna say the other part. <laughs> that the translation says but you don't you don't know the future we love to say I can't wait till things get better things may be better right now you just can't see it <laughs> you still here wisdom is good with an inheritance and by it there is profit to them that see the sun now watch this for wisdom is the defense and money is the defense here's the difference but the agency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. Money don't give you life. Money don't give you understanding. It might give you financial security. It might give you security to go do things that you want to do or something that you shouldn't do. Money is the love of money is the root of all evil. If you're expecting money to make you secure, you are wrong, people. Money can't even save your soul. You can't buy your way into heaven. 
But wisdom, <laughs> wisdom, <laughs> give of life to them that have it. Consider the work of God. For who can make straight which he hath made quicker? Oh, there it is. There go the fruit. But I'm going to keep going. And the day of prosperity be joyful. Listen to this. But in the day of adversity, consider. God has also set the one over against the other. To the end that man should not find nothing after him. Do you understand? God doesn't give you a blow by blow. It's how your life going to go. He just, just tell you to remember. You're going to have some good times. What's that? I had good days. You ever heard that song? I've had bad days too. I don't care who you are. Christian or non-Christian. God said he'll give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. Peace don't necessarily mean something got to go good for you to have peace. Mm. Okay. Mm. All things I've seen in the days of man, my vanity. There's a just man that perisheth in his righteousness. And there's a wicked man that prolongeth his life and his wickedness. Be like you like, I don't understand that. Well, the Bible tells you he don't understand it either. He done seen righteous people die early. He done seen rich, uh, rich wicked people. Die long, live long. Why? I don't know. It is what it is. Maybe he wanted to take the righteous person away before he got evil. And maybe he given the wicked person a longer life to see if he'll change from his evil ways. Who knows, people? <clears throat> Who knows? <clears throat> Check this out. Be not righteous over much. Now to make thyself overwise, why shouldest thou destroy thyself? Except thy righteousness exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees, you will in no case inherit the kingdom of God. Hmm. Now you need to go to the New Testament and see what righteousness God is warning us about. <laughs> the righteousness that destroys you. <laughs> but be not much wicked. Neither be thou foolish, why shouldest thou die before thy time? Well, we also know that being too ignorant, you can die early. The Bible itself tells you, honor your mother, your father, so your days will be longer upon this earth. Hmm. Hey, so think about that. You can a child can die early because of disrespect to their father over foolishness. It is good that thou shouldest take hold of this. They also from this withdraw not thine hand, for he that feareth God shall come forth of them all. Did we say all this stuff you reading right here? The man that fears, the man or the woman that fears God will come forth of them all. Mm. Wisdom strengthens the wise more than ten mighty men which are in the city. This wisdom will strengthen you. For there is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Uh, every preacher needs to read this every once in a while. Every evangelist needs to read this every once in a while. Everybody needs to read this right here one more time. For there is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Not Nam. I don't care who your pastor is. Nam. Not a Nam, not a Nam. Also, take no heed to all words that are spoken, lest thou hear thy servant curse thee. Why did he say that? For oftentimes also thine own heart knoweth that thou thyself likewise hast cursed others. Oh, God knows the hearts of man. I ain't say nothing. But in your heart, you was like, boy, I want to slap that taste out of his mouth right now. <laughs> <clears throat> All this have I proved by what? Wisdom. I said I would be wise, but it was far from me. He was, But it was far from me. Basically, I would never know anything. You can search after wisdom all day, but you ain't going to never know everything. I don't care who you are. You can read every book in the library. Guess what? There's another book being written after you read that one. Mm. That which is far off and exceedingly deep. Who can find it out? What he said, that which is far off and exceedingly deep, who can find it out? I applied my heart to know and to search and to seek out wisdom and the reasons of things and to know the weakness of folly, even of foolishness and madness. And I find more bitter than death. He found this through trials and tribulation. And I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets and her hands as bands. Whoso plead with God shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be taken by her. Now think about that. That goes, that goes both ways for man and woman. He said the wicked will destroy the evil. I wonder where I got that from. Here? A lot of times people are in wicked and evil relationships. <laughs> Did you hear me? Just say that again. Sometimes people are in wicked relationships, don't even realize it. 
I'm going to tell you how it's a lot of wicked relationships right here. A lot of people living in fornication. It takes two to tango. Mm -hmm. It takes two to lay down together and have sex. So two people laying together to, together that was that are not married, that's wickedness. Mm -hmm. Now think about the world we live in right now. I'm just going to use that right there. I'm not saying all the other sin. I'm going to use the sin of fornication. Just think about the sin of fornication right now. Think about how many people are drawn in into wicked relationships. Or that's even when adultery is committed. That's wicked. Mm -hmm. Now think about the world we live in now, people. Mm -hmm. All the Christians that go to church, been going to church for 12 years and still shacking up. Huh? He said, a person that pleases God will escape such type people. You're not going to stay with somebody if you're a child of God and God wants you to be married. He really wants you to die instead of to burn. <laughs> Why would he keep you in a fornicative relationship? Well, let's read this again. Mm -hmm. And I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets and her hands is man's whosoever pleases of God shall escape her. But the sinner shall be taken by her. <laughs> Think about it. Mm. Why join yourself to a harlot? The sinner will be taken by her or him for that case. But hold this have I found, said the preacher, counting one by one. I find out the account, which is my soul seeker, but I find not. He said, I find not. One man among a thousand have I found, but a woman among a thousand have I not found. Lo, this only have I found, that God have made man upright, but they have sought out many. Inventions. You want wisdom? You have not because you ask not. You have not because you seek not. <clears throat> Who can make straight which God has made crooked? Boy, I, God must have knew I wanted to talk about that or something. But it makes perfect sense. I posted some over the weekend, probably Friday. I like, now think about it. Let's, let's talk about a light bulb for a second. Let's talk about a light bulb. Do you have to tell somebody that's a light bulb? I'm going to ask you a question. Do you have to be like, that's a light bulb right there. Or when you're riding down the street, mm -hmm, down every street you go to, you see a pole light. You ain't got to be told that's a light. A light shine naturally. So think about this. You ain't necessarily got to walk around in life. I'm a Christian. <laughs> if you are becoming a Christian, your light is going to shine of itself. <laughs> Hmm. Right? I'm talking about it's going to sign. It's going to start showing automatic. If you do what God wants you to do, that still don't make you perfect. Ain't that scary? It still don't make you perfect. He said, I found none that sin not. Nail. Nail. But who can make straight what God has made crooked? I talked about this last week, man. We living in a Christian lifestyle where people are trying to straighten other people out. Well, according to the word, that is a lie straight from the depths of hell. We can lead people to God. What's the old saying? You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. That's all you can do is lead the way. Leaders lead by what? Example. I figured that out. You got different types of people in the world. You got a boss, Pharisee, <laughs> and you got a leader doing mm. you work at work you got a job you got one of those bosses or leaders let me say boss you got a boss that does this because the the hires and told them you know once you get hired up you don't need to be on that forklift but a leader don't give a damn mm. <laughs> if that forklift need to be operated and he's got a higher position he's gonna still get on that forklift <laughs> That's what a leader does. A leader goes out there and does it when it says he don't suppose to. <laughs> hmm. That's what I figured out. A lead man. To me, a leader is more important and a leader is not necessarily somebody who points. Think about the whole people. Everybody want to be leaders. But nobody wants to lead by example. That's what Jesus said. That's what the Bible says. Let them alone to be blind leaders of a blind. Let like them lay burdens on man that they won't even live for themselves. Won't even go out there and do themselves. <laughs> Come on, people. You need a leader. 
that live it, breathe it, sleep it. And the thing is, let me tell you something else first before you keep looking for that perfect leader. There is no perfect leader except Jesus Christ. Not your pastor, not your deacon, not your deaconess, not your prophetess. She's not perfect. She's not a good leader. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? A good leader leads people to Christ. Mm -hmm. Not to them. I'm telling y'all something this morning. A good leader leads people to Christ. Not to them. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean God, as a good leader, he's not going to allow you to help and assist people. That's part of being a Christian too. Mm -hmm. Let me pause and I will continue.